Praise the Lord. So glad you're able to join in this morning. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for our salvation, deliverance, and redemption all through Jesus Christ, who healed us, delivered us, and redeemed us, who gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. And Father God, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's open our Bibles over here to 3 John. Now, the scripture says here in verse 2, Beloved, that's each one of us a child of God. But once we receive Jesus Christ as Lord, we're in his beloved. And this is God writing to the church. Think about this. He's getting ready to wind up the epistle letters. And notice what he says here. He wishes above all things. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Even as our soul prospers. God, wa God wants our life to be prosperous financially. He wants our life to have good health. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And Jesus said there in John 6, 63, the words I speak to you, there is spirit in their life. This is one of the reasons why you and I need to learn all the promises we can as soon as we can, as soon as we become born again. Like Jesus said, learn of me. We need to learn everything Jesus did for us. And one thing he did for us in our redemption is that he became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, the scripture said, you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, Yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. And again, he said here that he wished above all things that we prosper and be in hell. He was our soul prosper. God's will for our life is to be financially independent. Because he said there, remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning of verse 9, He that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, his soul bound shall also bound it. And it goes on and tells that to be self-sufficient, the Amplified says, self-sufficient, possess enough to acquire, no way to support, and furnish abundance for every good work and charitable nation. And then we got Psalms, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then we have Psalm 112, verse 3, wealth and riches are our house. So think about this, the righteous person, that's the believer, has this new covenant that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. In the Bible are promises. Promises is God's will for our life. They're called exceedingly great and precious promises in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And as believers, we need to learn what Jesus did for us and take advantage of it. Because the covenant we have with God gives us so many benefits. Remember the psalmist said in Psalm 103, and forget not all his benefits. And like the, P the apostle Peter said in his epistle letter, I stir up your pure remembrance. When we first hear the promise of God, we're being exposed to it about what God's will is for our life. After that, when we keep hearing him, it's constantly reminding us of what belongs to us in Christ Jesus, who we are in Christ Jesus, and what we have in Christ Jesus. Like the scripture says there in 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And we just always need to remind ourselves of that, and by speaking it and reading it and decreeing it and declaring it, it'll help renew our mind to God's word. It'll help build us up till we get to the place that we know in our heart, God wants me to be prosperous. He wants me to have good health. He provided for me through Jesus Christ. And like 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, for you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, though we through his poverty might be rich. Knowing what the Father God has provided for us through Jesus Christ is going to be immensely helpful to each and every one of us. You know, some of us, when we got born again, we didn't know any scripture. So as when we begin to learn scripture, we begin to find out, wait a minute, you know, stuff I've heard about God wasn't true. And, you know, all kinds of religious teachings we would get just by going to church if we weren't taught God's word. Thank God for going to church, but we want to make sure we're being fed on God's word and being renewed to what Jesus did for us that we're no longer underneath guilt or condemnation because now we've received Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. We became the righteous of God in Christ. We became justified. God sees us as though we've never sinned. And so God's not withholding anything from us. The problem, the, he told us he's not in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. If he provided Jesus for us, he's not going to withhold anything else. And he doesn't. He's not the withholder. He's not waiting for you and I to get our act together and then he's going to bless us financially or bless us with any kind of blessing that he's already given it to us. He's already given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness in, first, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. And again in 2 Peter. He's already given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. He's blessed us there in Ephesians, says, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And if you look up those words there in that verse, 
in your Greek concordance, it'll let you know that one of those uh, the, uh, blessings there is prosperity and protection. So we take scripture like Ephesians 1, verse 3, that God's already given us all, th or, uh, blesses all spiritual blessings in every place. And 2 Peter 1, verse 3 and 4, that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue. When we learn what Jesus has done for us and put in action, the way we're going to get God's word to help us out is, first of all, be taught about what Jesus did for us. There's like over 140 scriptures in the Bible, in the New Testament, epistle letters, about who we are in Christ, in him, in whom, in Christ. And this tells us what belongs to us, what Jesus did for us, and what Jesus suffered for us were not to suffer. What he did. God placed the curse that was on mankind when Adam and sin, the curse came. God placed that upon Jesus when he being crucified. And not only that, but before, just before Jesus crucified, he was beaten. The scripture said that by his stripes we were healed. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for iniquities, and by his stripes we were healed. And we want to know that as believers. We want to constantly remind ourselves that sickness and pain doesn't belong to me. God placed that upon Jesus. And God wants us also to live in good health. Well, we don't have to be healed. And thank God healing belongs to us. But actually, he wants us to have good health. Like he said in the Old Testament, I'll take sickness away from midst thee, and the number of thy days I will fulfill. Well, no sickness being around would be divine health and divine healing. That means it comes from God. And he wished above all things that our soul prosper, our souls, our mind, our emotion, and intellect. And as we renew our mind to God's word, it's called saving the soul. We'll begin to see ourselves according to the word of God. That we're the righteous of God in Christ. We're complete in Christ Jesus. We're holy. We're justified. God sees us as though we've never sinned. He sees us unreprovable, unreprovable. Uh, un and not only that, he told us that he will keep us from falling in Jude verse 24. So when we take scripture like in Colossians chapter 1 and use, let's go over here, not too far away from it. We'll go to Colossians chapter 1 and notice here what the scripture said in the epistle letter what Jesus did for us. Now the scripture says here in verse 22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unreprovable, un unrebukable, Unreprovable, unblameable, excuse me, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Now think about unblameable, unreprovable. See, God doesn't find faults in us. And there's no sense you and I looking for him because that's all I'm going to do. It's going to bring up guilt and condemnation. And what we want to do is stay away from that. So those thoughts come to us that, you know, we did something wrong. We didn't pray enough. We didn't read our Bible enough and all that. That needs to be rebuked him instantly by saying, I re refuse this. I reject this guilt and condemnation. I don't accept it. So unreprovable. Hey, praise God for that. Notice again what it says here. In the body of his flesh through death to present you unblameable, so God's not blaming us, unreprovable in his sight. So God sees in his sight, he sees this this way, holy, unbelievable, unreprovable. Now in Colossians 2 verse 10 says, and you're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Think about this. We don't have to wait or try to become complete and then God's going to bless us with whatever we're trying to receive from God. No, we want to know right away. He's already given us all things pertaining to life and godliness, and we want to partake of it. How are we going to do that? By saying what the Word says about us. In the midst of, you know, of the midst of condemnation and guilt and doubt and unbelief, we want to say what God's Word says. Feeling the guilt and condemnation, rebuke it in Jesus' name. That's how we get God's Word to benefit our life, is by us speaking God's Word. By saying what the Word says and thinking in line with the Word. That's why it's just good to just keep processing, keep reciting a verse of Scripture to yourself. Like 3 John verse 2, that he wishes above all things that we prosper. When you're thinking of some kind of situation, you're not going to have enough money, or you're facing some kind of lack, or behind on some kind of bill, right then, just begin to say what the Word says. God wishes above all things that I prosper and be in health. ease my soul prosper. And just continually thank God. They're showing that you're determined to stand on God's promises and use God's word to receive all that God's provided for us in Jesus' name. And I, if you haven't, start using 3 John, verse 2, and just keep clearing and clearing. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And just use it for yourself. And then uh, find other prosperity scriptures and use that to build yourself up. Because this will help each one of us as we do this to get a single mind on God's word. That we'll see ourselves that we are prosperous. We are blessed because the word says we are. And that causes the blessing to materialize in our life. That, how did Jesus become our Lord? Is when we confessed him as our Lord. 
doing that. Maybe we didn't quite understand at the time when we prayed the sinner's prayer to receive Jesus Christ, Lord. But nevertheless, as soon as we did it, we became born again. When, we, when that happened and we received Jesus Christ, our Lord, we became the righteous of God in Christ. We can, became complete. So we're not, God's not waiting for us to become complete. We're complete now in Christ Jesus. Really so glad you will watch this morning. Till next time, Brother Rich, mind you, keep using that third John verse 2. Decree and declare it about yourself. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.